What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're, con we're continuing our series on using the Fluent Hard Surface Modeling add-on in order to quickly create hard surface models in Blender. In today's video we're going to focus on the piping and wiring tools contained inside of this tool. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you can find Fluent in the Blender market, and you're gonna notice that there's a couple different options over here. So the tools that we're talking about today are contained inside of the Power Trip option. Um, these are gonna be the wire and pipe tools. So if you want the wire and pipe tools, you need to get the Fluent Power Trip version in order to get those. And so in addition, there's also detailed documentation for this tool under the Documentation tab. Um, I will link to the documentation as well if you want a little more in-depth information about this add-on. But for this tool, what we want to do is we want to talk about how to add both wiring and cables as well as piping. And so the way that you can do that is with the tool active, you can tap the F key and let's start with the wire tool. So you'll note that there's a tool down here called wire. So if you click on that, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to place a wire between two different points. And one thing to note about this, because it's going to be really helpful, is if you uh, hold the control key while you do that, this is going to snap to the center of a face. And so notice how all I have to do is just click between two points in order to add a wire. And then we can make adjustments the same way that we do with everything else in Fluent. Um, so by holding the left click button. So you can also tap the W key in order to show or hide the wireframe in here if you want to see that. But for example, let's take a look at some of the tools that we have in here. So you're just going to click and hold the left mouse button and then you can adjust things like your radius, your bevel resolution, all of that kind of thing over here. You can simulate physics down here. You can adjust the kind of wire that's in here over here and then you can also add custom rings. So let's take a look at these options first. So the radius is going to allow you to adjust the size of the wire, um, the bevel resolution is just going to affect the amount of geometry that's being created in here when it's creating this. Um, the curve resolution is also going to affect the amount of geometry that's in here. Notice how the more that's in here, the smoother your wire is going to be, but it's going to be a heavier model as well. So you can also adjust your root strength, which is going to adjust like how far up and out your wire goes. So um, that's how you're going to affect the path of your wire. Then you can also add a twist, which we'll talk about in a second. So second, let's talk about the kinds of wires that are in here, because not only can you add like a singular wire, you can also adjust this so that you have multiple different wires, or um, if I was to reset this, you could also have like flat wires, um, or you could have wires that are set in more of a flat direction if you wanted to do that. There's also coils, duct, spiral protection and note that you can adjust the thickness of that as well as how wide that goes so these are all really adjustable and then there's also then there's also an option in here for a chain so if you want to create a chain between different points you can do that right here as well and so notice how right now this gives you kind of like a like a stiff wire, um, meaning that you're, you're, you're affecting it based on your root strength, but you're not really being able to affect the path all of that much. And let's say, for example, that we wanted our wire, um, instead of being stiff like this, to have gravity associated with it. So this is a computer model I've downloaded from Sketchfab. So here's model credit. It's the Low Poly Gaming Desk by Abdullah Yeah Yeah, And I will link to that in the notes down below. It's a Creative Commons attribution model so you can download that and follow along if you want to but I've just added a little plug over here and then a little point right here from which we want our wire to run I'm just gonna tap the F key and a wire and I'm just gonna hold the control key and click in order to place a point here and click to place a point here and so remember that you can come in here and adjust your root strength like this but the problem is this looks kind of weird right um, it doesn't really look very um, it doesn't really look very realistic so what we can do instead and I might bring our root strength down just a bit maybe something more like this but down below there's an option here to simulate physics and so for this um, for this wire, I'm going to bring the radius down a little bit too. But we can just select the option for simulation. Well, notice how we've got these little uh, highlighted points in here. Those are the points that are going to be pinned, and then everything between those two points is going to be simulated. So we can then hit the enter key, 
And what that's going to do is that's going to use physics in order to simulate this object. So now this wire follows a gravity path rather than just rather than just the one that we can set with the root resolution. So in addition, there's also options. If you were to hold the or uh, we're going to go back in here and edit this. If you were to hold the left mouse button, you can also add rings. So notice how when you add rings, that's going to allow you to add things like fittings in here. So if I click and hold, I can adjust the length that fitting right here. So you could add a thickened piece over on this side. You do the same thing over here. So we're just going to go back to curve. We're just going to do the same thing. We're going to add a ring for our second ring. We're going to adjust our position so that it's over here. And for this one, if we wanted to, we could make it a little bit longer. And then position it a little bit more. So you can add rings in order to add thickness in here. You could also, if you wanted to, add a custom. So let's say I just wanted to add like a simple circle. We'll scale it down. We'll fill it in. And then I am just going to inset this a little bit, delete this central face, and then I'm just going to extrude it up a little bit. So just a little ring in here, and I'm going to go ahead and apply rotation and scale. Well, now we can select this object. So we'll just click on add your ring, and then we'll just click on our ring. We'll notice how that object gets added to this wire. Well, now I can adjust this by adjusting the position. I can adjust the size, like how big it is on the wire. And so that allows us to create custom wires or custom rings for our wires. So you can also use that custom design or that custom shape in order to create like a wire shield or something like that. So let's say I added a wire right here and then let's click on add your design and click on this. Well, notice how this is really thick right here, well you can adjust this by left clicking and going to adjust your design. And then notice if I move my mouse to the left or to the right, you can see I can adjust the gap in here. So you can use a custom shape in order to create a wire like this one inside of Fluent. So you could also type the B key in order to adjust the pipe itself. And you could type C to adjust the size in here. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can adjust in here in order to create like custom wires as well. And then finally, let's talk a little bit about the pipe tool. So the pipe tool is gonna work in a very similar way to the wiring tool in the sense that what you do is you just select an object, type the F key. In this case, you just select pipe, right? So let's say I wanted to add a pipe that went around this corner. So I could just click here and then I'm just gonna move my mouse I'm going to click here in order to create my pipe. So the first thing you're going to notice is it's not following on the right direction, right? So we just want to hold the left mouse button. We want to adjust the root length. One thing to note about this is you can hold the shift key or the control key to adjust the speed at which this changes your path. So for me, right, I'm just going to hold shift. I'm going to move my mouse until my radius is in more of a proper location. I'm also going to adjust the path. So I was getting some weird points in there, but if I move my mouse over here, notice how this is kind of turning the corners the proper way. And so this is gonna work a lot the same way as the wire tool in the sense that if I was to click and hold, for example, you could add like multiple different pipes. You could adjust your pipe radius. It's in here. You can do a lot of different things with multiple pipes. You could also reset that. And you could also do the multiple flat pipes as well. And but you can also come in here and adjust things like your count of pipes. So the number of pipes that are being created in here, as well as the offset. So the offset, you could just tap the S key. That's going to adjust your offset in here. So, all right. And then let's say we wanted to add a, pa a pipe just along this face, maybe. So we'll just uh, type the F key, we'll add a pipe, then we'll click from here to here. Just adjust our path really quick. 
There we go, just something simple like this. Well, you can use the rings again the same way we did before. So for example, let's say you wanted this to have like a flange or a fitting, you can add a ring. And then you can adjust things like the length, the position, other things like that. So I could come back and I could do that again. So I can just add a ring, adjust the position on that one, like that. And then let's say you wanted to add like maybe something in the middle of the pipe. You could add a ring. And adjust that position as well. So you can see how the piping tool also gives you those options to add the rings and other things like that. The one thing that's a little weird about that is just getting the pipe to follow the path you want it to follow. It can be a little bit twitchy, but if you play around with it, you can usually get some pretty good results. So that's kind of an overview of the pipe and wire functions inside of Fluent. I'd love to hear from you guys what else you'd like to see from this add-on or if you're interested in this series at all. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.